Welcome back, everybody. This Week in America, thank you for joining us on the program. Back with us on the show, Thomas Miller. He's been a student of Unaria since he was 14 years old. Now, at that time, meaning Ernest L. Norman, the founder and teacher of Unarius. Tom has given many lectures on Unarius principles over his 56 years of study. A frequent media guest, been featured in a documentary film, also written several books about Unarius principles, including a book of verse, the epic, and a series of lectures, which was published in the book, The Keys to the Universe. Tom maintains a website, unariusunited.com, that features Dr. Norman's teaching as well as a student testimonial section and discussion section as well. A degree in science and accounting, Tom is the owner of a tax accounting firm in Portland, Oregon. Once again, the website is unariusunited.com. And also joining us is Robert Maxim. Yes, the author of the highly acclaimed Legacy series, a culmination written in novel form of decades of sleep time visits to other worlds starting as a child and is witnessing of countless alien craft. He spent over 40 years studying science, religion, and the science of life presented by Dr. Norman. Thomas Miller and Robert Maxim back with us again on This Week in America. Gentlemen, welcome back to the program. Greetings, Rick. How are you doing? I am doing fine and looking forward to this. Yeah. Robert is back with you, and the video version of this, Robert is a vice president in charge of visuals, and he's pulling up the pictures as we, <laughs> as we talk during the program. If you go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, you will see uh, Tom and Robert, myself, and you can pull up the, uh, the videos from the past uh, several programs as well. Tom, I thought we would start because we've had some questions come in since the last time you were here. Let's talk about those, and then we'll go back and sort of recap Unarius and, and give some basic information on Unarius. But one of the questions from the, the last broadcast was, if I made bad decisions in a previous life, will I repeat them in my current life? And if so, how can I avoid them? And we talked a lot about reincarnation the last time. If you made bad decisions, will those necessarily repeat and have an impact on this life? That's a good question because you usually don't or are not able to avoid past life uh, energies. They will repeat uh, until we overcome them, neutralize them, or whatever term we need to use. Um, Yes, uh, when we do make these so-called bad decisions, we select uh, our future because what we're doing now, at any particular time, which is now, we are uh, creating, regenerating our future. So whatever we do, uh, that is will be our future. So um, when you uh, relive these things, these experiences, you are always given the opportunity to overcome them, to neutralize them, so that they become wisdom instead of a negative part of your uh, being. What are some of the, the challenges that you have faced in, in dealing with past failures? That was a, another specific question, but it really ties in with what we're talking about, first of all, especially the second part of that. How can I avoid you talking, uh, you were talking about how you, how you overcome what were some of the challenges you faced in dealing with past failures, and how did you go about overcoming those? Well, the main thing is when we live our life, we uh, encounter various experiences that are emotional in nature, or we might become uh, uh, jealous or angry, or uh, maybe we might do some shady deals which are negative in our life. Uh, these energies are uh, recreated for us at all times. And uh, the uh, superconsciousness actually sets up these experiences for us uh, throughout our lives and throughout our life. And we uh, are given the opportunity, let's say, in the present to. Uh, master those experiences now a lot of times uh, we will ignore the uh, higher self or the super consciousness in our endeavor to overcome and we just give in to that emotion and that is what has happened to me of course uh, just as a normal person on his evolutionary path these experiences where I got angry or I got jealous uh, 
which is a few times in his lifetime. <laughs> uh, I might not have, uh, or I, I didn't uh, understand or did not address that emotional content in my psychic anatomy. And therefore, I relived it as it was when I had originally incurred it in some past lifetime. Everything that we incur today is a direct derivative from our past. It is always related to our past, these experiences that we're having today. And so therefore, uh, like I said, if we do not address these things when they come about, then uh, they're going to regenerate. The issue here is if we do not uh, overcome them when we come across them, then in some future time, they will re-express themselves. However, they will be re-expressed as a regenerative more stronger than we had it in today. In other words, energy is never created or destroyed. Uh, <clears throat> when we have these thoughts, uh, negative thoughts, they just do not go out into the ethers and dissipate and go away. They actually go into our psychic anatomy and they are uh, relived into the psychic anatomy in a secular form. In this world, time is a separated element out, uh, and therefore we, we feel, feel like we live in 60 years and then that's it. Well, that's not true because in the psychic anatomy, it's a secular, these energies are in a secular form, and, and they are expressing their IQ, their intelligence, or their data, which is impinged upon the energy form, or the energy vortex, we might call it. And they are, uh, in a cycler manner, regenerating themselves over and over and over and over again until they are changed with another waveform or another thought pattern which changes those things. So if we look about our daily life and see how we are expressing ourselves with our fellow man, within ourselves, all the fears and phobias, they are coming from the psychic anatomy in a regenerative form. And uh, they, we express those things. Now we need to realize those things. We need to realize that that's what is happening right. and, and just not... Uh, Okay, I got mad today. I got angry at my fellow worker. Okay, that's done. Now I feel okay. So that's totally over. That's done with. Never happen again. Uh, but that's not true. What we've done is generated a definite, a definitive energy waveform with that intelligence, with that negative uh, emotion onto uh, what we call a waveform and the waveform shape is this intelligence or it's an information on it and it goes into the psychic anatomy our psychic anatomy that uh, is in a secular form where time is incorporated into it now if you think about that for a second you know that uh, time is uh, repeating itself repeating itself at all times in that cycle and every time that cycle comes around, it will express itself in the lower dimensions, which are which is our physical life. So you can see that uh, as we go about our life and we express uh, all of these emotions, then we are reinforcing these emotions if we are not uh, analyzing them on an energy basis. Does that help? Uh, yes, and I think that's a very thorough answer to the question in, in talking about the the impact of past energy, bad decisions, bad uh, failures that you've that you've had in your lives. Uh, our guest yeah. in the program is Thomas Miller. We are talking about Unarius. We're talking about the science of life information available at the website unariusunited.com. If you have questions for Tom for future programs, you can contact us at uh, thisweekinamerica.us. There's a, a, a contact uh, us category, and you can email, and you can you can contact us directly. Do the same at Tom's website unariusunited.com or at Robert's website rgaten, G-A-E-T-A-N.com. 
Well, one more question that we had from the uh, from the past, and then we'll talk a little bit about uh, about Unarius and exactly yes. what it is. But the uh, the question was: If I study the science of life, how will my life change? Huh. It will change dramatically. I've had an experience to where I was studying for a few years, and uh, at one uh, meeting that the Unarius students got together, and we were listening to one of Dr. Norman's uh, audio tapes, and all of a sudden, I had my eyes closed, the room was a little dark, and uh, I uh, felt a tremendous light just uh, palpitating inside my head. It was a mental thing. But this light pulsing inside my head, I had a tremendous realization that uh, uh, I had contacted the, uh, the highest form that I could conceive of the, of the God force. And uh, I actually burst out in, in tears and actually wailing. I was just so thrilled, so immersed and that energy uh, that uh, I felt my life had totally uh, gone away, my old life, and that I had a new life uh, in front of me. And ever since then, I've been so uh, dedicated and so desirous of learning the principles of life and starting to use them. And uh, that was a life-changing moment in my life. And, and all the other students, they... They were wondering what the heck was going on with this guy, you know. <laughs> well, that was a defining moment for you, and probably for the others that were in the uh, the, the group discussion as well, seeing your yeah. response and how you were touched by by what you were going through. I, I, yeah. I mentioned Unarius, and the website is unariusunited.com. Unarius is U N A R I U S. You can link on directly by going to our website this week at america.us. Let's get really basic here for people that may be joining us for the first time in, in our discussion. What exactly is Unarius? What does it mean? And who created Unarius? Well, it would probably be good to uh, continue our discussion of what Unarius is and what it entails. Yes, let's you, let's you, do that because you, there are a lot of people that are say, wondering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unarius is a spiritual organization. It's made up of teachers and leaders who are functioning from certain celestial planes. Uh, these planes, uh, we can consider them as dimensions, which have heretofore been known as Shambhala. This great light filled this great light filled organization in the, uh, the past has been known as uh, in theosophical circles as the White Brotherhood. Now it's been updated to Unarius by Dr. Norman. We're in the infinite principles are explained in the present scientific jargon and impressed with uh, transcendent healing energies. Unarius is formed by thousands of teachers, doctors, scientists, and masters who have, uh, the, well, they have the destiny and the, the guidance of mankind as their spiritual work. Many have recently lived on the earth. Others have lived here on the earth uh, thousands of years ago and from infinite number of worlds do they incarnate and to help mankind so when we say that this is Shambhala or the White Brotherhood and now it's updated to Unarius uh, we could say that this is a great organization however in the infinite universe in the infinite mind there are actually an infinite number of Shambhalas uh, servicing various parts of the, of the uh, lower worlds. We can view the infinite principles from a scientific or philosophical or a psychological point of view and relationship. 
we have a very important concept of the mind-body relationship in its teachings. And from a psychological point of view, we can then assess the human condition and makeup, where we analyze each person's evolutionary relationship to the God force within him or her. And all now of we the, all, go ahead. Yeah, Tim, I, I was just going to say, all of the information uh, is at the website, unariusunited.com. Go ahead and finish that thought. We're rapidly running through time, and I do want to talk a little bit about that mind-body relationship that you that you just mentioned. So I, I apologize for interrupting. Go ahead and finish that thought, please. Yeah, yeah. We all live and operate by the same principles. On the earth, we are experiencing the finite part of the infinite in the higher worlds. And uh, the higher worlds are uh, more infinite in nature where time itself is incorporated into energies and are manifest there. In these higher dimensions, we don't have physical bodies. We instead are completely living as pure energy bodies. We call the psychic anatomy or body. Even in this world, everything is energy, where we refer to atoms <clears throat> and dynamic electromagnetic energy as light photons. These photons are, or energies are expressed in uh, precise attunements. There's no such thing as a random experience, a random event in the infinite. Everything is very precise. All attunements and frequency relationship and harmonic attunement are intertwined and beating against in the infinite, regenerating all energy, ideas, forms, or conditions, and even human beings, and are regenerated through harmonic interplay, which recreates these forms in these higher dimensions until they are demodulated into this third dimension which we now are become reactive to. <clears throat> I think that a lot of times we think there is nothing else. All we can see about us or relate to us from our five physical senses, and that's all there is to it. Right. That's all, there's nothing else. And yet the, even the scientist is finding that the universe is infinitely filled. Uh, even in space, uh, there is what the science is finding, what they call virtual particles, wherein they automatically appear and then they automatically disappear. Now, their life cycle is very short, but the infinite space is filled with these virtual particles. I don't know where they come from. Space itself is infinitely filled. We are ha we're just a ball of energy and a sea of energy. We differentiate the forms we interact with through our consciousness. As we live in these spiritual worlds, we learn of our nature and what we need to work out when we incarnate into a new physical body. Always helped and guided by the more advanced adepts and masters. As we incarnate and grow into this world, the physical world, we experience what we have set up in these uh, in-between Earth lives. When we die, we have again shed our physical body. Now, we are a pure energy, and our body is connected to the infinite in a completely different relationship. That, that, that total consciousness is minus our five physical senses. We've shed the body so we don't have those senses anymore. Right. So we have to rely on something else. If we think about it in our physical life, we have these <clears throat> five physical senses which are are simply sensing devices, of course, but, sense. but we have a sixth sense. We have a mind. That mind does not die. It now is reliving itself 
or living itself in these spiritual dimensions as pure energy. We might not, might not be aware they have a sixth sense, which is our mind. This mind is now our communications device with the universal infinite about us and all of our fellow beings, which are also uh, going through this evolutionary process and living in these higher worlds. Now, on the screen, you'll see the, the schematic of, of our psychic anatomy, <clears throat> which is pure energy and living in these higher uh, dimensions. And uh, you can see we, we use a, a chair as simply a device where the energy from the chair goes into the eyes, which is the optic nerve, and then it goes into the, the brain, which we discussed earlier, that uh, there are certain neurons that will fire on particular uh, uh, particular points of uh, ionization or and, and then the synapsis, synapsis uh, creates a firing, which goes into the hypothalamus. And then you can see on to the left there, there's these uh, waveforms that goes into, there's three forms a relationship in the psychic anatomy, which is the subconscious, the mental conscious, and the superconscious. And we can see here that they are in a spiral form or a vortexual form or a cycular form, if you want to call it. But <clears throat> all of these uh, energies from our subconscious is all of the experiences that we're living in our physical life today. The mental consciousness is all of our past lifetimes, and the superconsciousness is the God force or Christ self within us that has been originally generated when we first began our evolutionary trek or journey through this uh, infinite nature. Tom has mentioned the, the, the visuals on this. If you go to the website thisweekinamerica.us and go to the video section, you will see the YouTube, or you can go directly to YouTube and uh, and look us up there as well and see uh, what Robert has up on the screen as, as we're talking. Unfortunately, the time always goes by so quickly. We really covered a lot of good ground today on the program, and our guest has been Thomas Miller, the website is Unarius United. All of the information we talked about, it's an excellent website that breaks down all of the basic information and goes beyond that. So whether you're just beginning or you're someone who's been studying this for some time, you will find something for you at the website, UnariusUnited.com. Uh, with us in, in running the pictures, of, of course, Robert Maxim, our frequent guest on the program. His website is rgaten, G-A-E-T-A-N.com. Tom, the time went by uh, quickly. As always, a lot of great information out there. More to talk about on the next program. And we encourage people to get a hold of uh, either of us with questions, which we will answer on the next program. Thank you once again for being with us on the program and, and sharing this, this information with us. Thank you very much, Rick. Our guest once again, Thomas Miller. The website is unariusunited.com. I've given you a lot of information. You can find it all at our website, thisweekatamerica.us. Link on directly with, uh, with Thomas and his website, Unarius United. Our website, thisweekatamerica.us. And we're back right after these messages. <laughs> 